So, good morning, all. Yesterday, on the first day of Faculty European program, we had great sessions by Mr. Jayant Oak on introduction to innovation and by Dr. Sharad Joshi sir on innovation process. Today, we have Dr. Archana Thosa with us. She is a Dean, Research and Development, and Professor of Electrical Engineering at College of Engineering, Pune. She has very rich biodata. I will try to summarize. She has completed her BE and ME from one of the renowned college, that is Walchand College of Engineering, Sangli. She has done her PhD from IIT Kharagpur in 2009. Archana has 20, 27 years of teaching experience in various government colleges like Government Engineering College, Amravati, Government Engineering College, Aurangabad, College of Engineering, Pune, and Walchand College, Sangli. She has two years experience of design engineer in Jaguar Technical Center, Miras. Dr. Archana Ma'am is a recipient of various awards like National Merit Scholarship in 1986, Applied DSEUM Facilitator by MHRD, she has been selected by National Productivity Council India and Asian Productivity Organization Tokyo Japan to represent India on evaluation of training effectiveness at Fiji Island. Regarding research publication, she has published five research paper during her PhD, along with she has published 19 research papers in renowned journal, research journals, she has presented 39 papers in various conferences. Thosar Ma'am has attended a number of training programs conducted by renowned organizations like IIT Kanpur, IIT Bombay, and various government colleges. Dr. Thosar Ma'am has organized various training programs on microcontrollers and applications, electric drives, induction training program for engineering teachers, power quality, MCB manufacturing process, industrial training for engineering teachers, and training programs on MATLAB. Her area of research are special machines, fault tolerant control, control system, renewable energy, and energy optimizing control. MAM has undertaken various consultancy projects like setting of electrical machines laboratory as per IS, street light design for municipal corporation Aurangabad. Now she is a Dean of Continuing Education Program, is in charge of AICT portfolio at Government College of Engineering and now has received grant of rupees 20 lakh for post graduation. She is a chairman of Board of Studies in Autonomous Institutes. Ma'am has delivered various lectures on control system, energy management, fuzzy logic, MATLAB, and optimization technique. It's really our privilege that we have such a great personality with us to share her experience and knowledge. So I now request to Dr. Thosar Ma'am to take a control of session and give a, give a speech on government schemes for promoting innovations. Thank you, Ma'am. Yeah, thank you, sir, for uh, my introduction, detailed introduction. And uh, good morning, everyone, and respected members, faculty members of various institutes. Uh, I, I would like to thank you, Bharti Dapit, uh, Institute of Management and uh, Entrepreneurship Development, Pune, for inviting me to deliver the session on uh, such an interesting topic. So, um, ma'am, can we request you to please switch on your camera? Is it possible? Uh, all the time, madam, it will okay. be. Yeah, okay. Because I would like to concentrate on my presentation, but when I, okay. will, I will definitely. Right. Sure, huh? sure. 
so i am not uh, getting where okay i got it so okay. about a sharing i was thinking so yeah yeah um, so good good morning each one of us and uh, we will start i will start my session on uh, innovation uh, the various government schemes on innovation so uh, my presentation i have organized in a way that a uh, uh, few minutes we will spend on what is innovation and uh, what is the difference between the creativity and innovation and i will be explaining the various government schemes and uh, then how this government schemes to be implemented in our institute what is the requirement of, as a faculty we should focus on so that this all schemes Uh, can be implemented in our institute or we can get a maximum benefit out of the schemes so i will be focusing on those also and as it is about the innovation and uh, innovation so the basic uh, focus i think is on uh, how to enhance the innovation uh, and uh, for that i will be discussing few techniques like how you could uh, do it uh, in your institute or uh, when you are teaching something as a teacher as a faculty so now i will start sharing my screen and then will uh, like i will start my presentation so i think this is the um, i think everyone is okay with this uh, organization of the talk if you have anything in addition you can write in a chat box i will look at it and i will try to answer those things also yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. And in the end, fifteen minutes, we can unmute the participants if they have any questions. We can do that, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my screen is visible, and uh, am I audible clearly? Ma'am, you are audible, no. but screen is not yet visible, ma'am. Okay, it's that's why I uh, close my video. It's saying that it's presenting. It's still not visible. It's uh, not visible yet. Not visible yet, ma'am. You are joining from uh, browser or Microsoft Team app, ma'am? Uh, Team app. Okay, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, can you sh uh, share the very first option that is screen or desktop window? Uh, very first screen or desktop. Enter, enter the full screen. Yeah. Enter the full screen. Shall I do that? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. That or, will be oh, easiest oh, one. Chat tray. It gives a screen option. So uh, please uh, select a screen, and then. Uh, Can is it visible now? Not yet. I think it's coming. Yeah, I think it's come. Now it has come. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Oh, it is so. and while sharing which options are coming with uh, when you pressing this upside arrow that is share content uh, open share tray right I'm yeah just click on open share tray then what which options are coming uh, there is a window desktop then my presentations i could see okay then please select the window a uh, window okay then Yes, it's visible. Now you can move to your present uh, presentation. Now it is visible. Your uh, yes. screen is visible, but not the presentation. You can click on your presentation. I have clicked already. Okay. 
Shall I join it from the browser? Leave in. Not a problem, ma'am. Uh, please uh, open the share tray content and uh, select the desktop actually, option. Actually, the it's giving me that is... presenting. It's giving me message. Yes, ma'am. It's pres just presenting, but your uh, PPT window is not uh, visible. So what you if you please uh, just stop, uh, stop presenting, you can cl uh, click on the cross window again. Just click on the open share tray. OK. And uh, uh, can you please again specify which options you can see? Desktop. Shall I do for desktop? Yes, or? yes, definitely desktop. Yes, ma'am, it's visible now. It's visible. Huh. My screen is visible now, right? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, I will make it a full screen. Now full screen is also visible. Huh? Yes. OK, so I will be presenting the government schemes for promoting innovations. Just now I just mentioned I will be uh, discussing few things about the innovation and creativity and then I will be moving to various schemes. Uh, proposed by uh, or offered by the government, uh, particularly our Indian government. And uh, then I will be discussing that how we could uh, get maximum benefit out of these schemes and what um, changes or innovation we should do into our academic processes. So that is that is my that will be the content of discussion. So. <clears throat> Uh, we'll first see how the innovation is uh, defined by the people. Like innovation is creating new value or capturing value in a new way. Value is the key word, stressing the difference between innovation and invention. So definition is simple, easy to memorize and also good enough to encom encompass the innovation in all the value chain. So these definition focuses more on like creating a new value into something. It is different from invention and you will be uh, creating something or adding some new value into it. Then there's another definition by Dr. Makran of the chips uh, from Ostrom, Sylvania. There he has said that innovation is an idea that has been transformed into practical reality. For a business, this is a product process or business concept or combinations that have been activated in the marketplace and produce new profits and growth for the organization. He said that I differentiate radical and disruptive innovation from the incremental kind, since the latter can happen if the company is simply great at what it already does. True innovation is far more than an extension of what is done normally and while being different. Uses capabilities that exist in a company or rare are augmented by strategic alliances. Therefore, something is an innovation not simply because it is new to that company, but because it is simply new. So I'm putting these two definitions in front of you because the first definition was saying that something new, some new value addition into the system that will be called as an innovation. But this, this definition now, the next definition is now more focusing on what is called as a new. So this new this this definition particularly tells us about uh, something is added, something is incrementally we have modi modified doesn't mean it's an innovation. Actually, it is the same thing which the, the earlier definition was also trying to say, but uh, I thought that I should elaborate it because if I if I if we look at it, then it uh, the message generally gives that any incremental change will be called as an innovation, but uh, this Dr. Makran is uh, specifying it very nicely that innovation is not an incremental kind of a change it only, but it should be a simply new. So something new which is in the product process, in a business concept or in anything which is um, getting ben which will be benefiting to the user or the customer uh, or the community in a large. So th that is the uh, called as innovation. Now, sometimes we generally discuss about the innovation and creativity together. 
so creativity and innovation the definitions of the, these two terms or the understanding of these two terms are totally different and we must understand what is called as a creativity and what is called as innovation so looking at these two definitions you might have understood that any incremental change which is simply great or simply new can be called as an innovation so to understand this and to understand the difference between the creativity and innovation i would like to give you an example of uh, uh, like our traffic uh, system okay traffic control system so initially when like as the time moves uh, you might have seen that uh, initially there was uh, only a havaldar used to stand in a square where there is a crossing of roads and uh, and this havaldar used to control the traffic like he used to stop somebody and then allow some uh, lane to go and then uh, the other way so the initially what would have happened if put to this because all all of you might have seen from this so what would have happened earlier so earlier it might have happened that the the vehicles have started coming on the road or the people have started using the roads the road has come as a concept uh, then the transportation has come into the uh, maybe uh, come into the existence and then what happened with this the traffic density has been increased or uh, the population density has also been increased on the road i mean uh, during the trans during the commuting from one place to another place and then it might have realized that there should be some regulation so and particularly while while there, there there is a crossing of roads so or crossing of the paths and then the first thought has come into the mind that it should be regulated or it should be controlled and that is called as a creativity because there is a problem might have come because of uh, due to the accidents or because of the speeding of vehicles because the vehicle has started coming um, coming uh, with the with the engines the, the initial vehicles were the manual vehicles even there the control was not so sophisticated like in a bicycles or in a three wheeler rickshaws or or like that or or even the horse and all so the people might have thought that it should have a control so that was that has come that is a creativity like whenever there is a road crossing there should be some control option which will control the flow of traffic so it has it is a creative idea that is something new which has come or you can say that um, or we can think about like the flying in the air so uh, we were always uh, used to have the uh, like a journey on the road or we can travel from the road we can use the road as a transportation media we can use the water as a transportation media we can this this was very uh, known to us but then a tra traveling in air it has come because there will be a less less um, you can say the traffic density or uh, it can it could be a fast or it can be a, uh, like uh, 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 you can reach to the destination within a short time and all so this is the something creative idea that to fly in air and then that aeroplane has come at uh, the uh, come into existence and then lot of modification has been done into it so all the, the the first idea which has come which was out of box or which is something different uh, called as a creativity and then what has happened on the top of on that we have added some value to it which is completely new you can say or simply new and then that is called as a innovation like suppose if we consider the traffic traffic uh, controlling so initially only a person was handling it uh, at where the roads were crossing and then what has happened then uh, the uh, the electrical traffic signals has come so there are three lights which will be indicating the red then the green and the uh, orange or yellow yellow one so what they will be doing that they will be giving you the indication that red is to stop then green is to go and uh, yellow is that you have to stop in between the transition so initially it was only red and green but then the people have understood that within uh, like when some vehicle is passing so you should have a some small slot of a time to pass it and then there is a safety then the yellow light has come so what has happened this is a innovation the first idea was a creativity like there should be some control and then now the things are getting added to make it more comfortable more safe and more user friendly so it is a innovation something new has been added which is simply new so that yellow concept yellow light concept has come 
initially the lights were used were literally incandescent lamp with the colored uh, colored glass and all like that then the colored lamps are used then the small lamps are used then the led started using we started using led then uh, it has become a solar powered then you have uh, now we could see that innovation into it is the uh, you the timer is there now so you can see that how much time i i will have to wait at this junction so uh, accordingly you can stop your vehicle or you can uh, shut your vehicles and then again you can start it so you can save the energy so this has also come with that concept that how much time i will be standing here so you can use your mobile in that time and everything so that has facilitated us so that was again a innovation that putting a timer um, uh, on the top of it then what has happened like in some cities the fuzzy logic best uh, the traffic control system has come like fuzzy logic best means like uh, looking at the traffic density the uh, the signal will be on and off so uh, that is another innovation you can say huh? that is called as a innovation because it has added some value into the existing system uh, because this this value addition has made uh, comfortable for uh, the community so it it was giving some comfort some benefits to the uh, user so that ai based uh, traffic signal has come in some places the robots have been used so instead of four four lights and making the combination of it and then sometimes what happens suppose a uh, microcontroller uh, fails or some uh, power uh, uh, changes comes and then it is malform it malfunctions so, so in some cities the robots are used so the robot will exactly mimic like a human being and then uh, that is called as supposed to be a robust uh, technique some people say that it is a robust technique that because it is very less susceptible to uh, failures so the robots have come into the uh, signal now the new concept has come like there, there will not be any traffic signal at all but the traffic will be moved in such a way that you don't have to wait for a traffic signal so you will we you will not be uh, like creating any pressure or there will not be any brakes applied or uh, the less chances of accidents uh, because what happens sometimes uh, we uh, the people try to run into the uh, wrong signal and all so those things can be avoided and now the innovation has come that if you have a little space little more space i mean then you can have the uh, system wherein you don't have to wait for the uh, wait for the uh, you know, signals so you will be moving on continuously so that that will uh, avoid the excess use of energy then the pollution will be reduced and all so such kind of studies always goes on and then it is called as a innovation because you are adding something new into the existing system so as a exercise you can you can also write down so many innovations like there are innovations into the electric vehicle there are innovations into the vehicle itself because the first the wheel has come then the the two wheeler has come bicycle has come two wheeler has come then the motorcycle then now we have a electric vehicle electric vehicle with various uh, uh, functionalities and every day something new is coming that today uh, charging time has been reduced or the weight has been reduced so that the power requirement of the vehicle is reduced so daily some innovation is happening on the basic uh, creativity what was uh, introduced the uh, the 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 will the will was uh, the first step because of the will as the uh, the people have discovered this or in, uh, invented it and then the we could add some innovations into it okay so you should have a clear understanding between what is a creativity and innovation now both these concepts the creativity and innovations to be actually nurtured into the students because they are they will be if they are creative and innovative then only our economy can be uh, can be uh, strengthened so how it will happen how it can be so whenever the any country in any country the creativity and innovation is at the highest level then the ipr generation will also be higher because if i am adding some value into it then i can make a patent of it and after making a patent of it i can offer it as a technology and i can earn the money continuously we can earn the money we can earn the money at one go also 
like by selling those um, IPRs. So uh, this I, this creativity and innovation is always related with the economy. So the country who in which the students or the uh, you can say the uh, citizens are more creative and innovative than their economy is always strong. So China is a good example. You you look at it, everything is innovated. So there are some creativity also. So why, uh, how we should foster all this creativity and innovation? So it can be done through your curriculum. It is nothing to do with the genetics and all. You every, Anybody can be a creative and innovative. We have to train our brain like that. So the first step we have to do to increase the creativity and innovation into the students is to use the Bloom's taxonomy. So Bloom's taxonomy tells us that whenever we uh, like teaching anything, right now I'm talking to you. So the learning is happening at the other end. OK, I'm I'm delivering something and the people are receiving it and faculty members are receiving it and it, the learning is happening at various levels. So the, the levels of learning uh, is classified by the Bloom's and he always tells us that like uh, suppose if you wanted to have a more creative and innovative your brain to be trained into this way, then your evaluation system and your uh, knowledge delivery system should have a higher order traits, uh, higher order thinking traits like it should be analysis, design, evaluation and create. So if I organize my delivery of knowledge or, or if I organize my evaluation systems in a higher order traits, which is called as a heart, then there is a possibility like maximum possibility that our students will be creative and innovative wherever they will be working or they will be uh, even the self-employed. So this creative and innovative will definitely give us a stronger economy and uh, uh, even it will give us the good environmental uh, impact also because when you are creative and innovative, you will always try to reduce the carbon footprints and all because today the challenges are different. So we have to be creative and innovative. At the end, I will be giving you some uh, uh, like uh, uh, you can say uh, some formulas how to increase the creativity and innovate innovation in uh, your at your workplace while teaching the courses. So uh, the, uh, I hope that all the um, all are the faculty members. So uh, I will uh, I will recommend Sorry, them that. Yeah, uh, ma'am, we are on which slide? I on the same slide. Same slide, no? Just wanted to confirm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Because I'm talking about the same thing. Right? Yes, yes. Just wanted to confirm. Thank you, ma'am. Please. Sir. So while while teaching, uh, uh, while yeah, while teaching them, uh, you can make every subject, every course as an assignment best or a project best. So any any concept you teach them, you can ask them to think upon it by giving some challenging assignments, some practical assignments or some some projects, the minor projects to work upon so that they will they will automatically become innovative and creative because it's all about training your brain to think think something new. OK, so I would like to share one small story regarding uh, like to um, uh, make you understand what I wanted to say or uh, uh, convince you what I wanted to tell you uh, from this. I think many of you may be knowing it, but still uh, those who do not know, I wanted to repeat it again. So there was a company uh, which were making a shoe and they wanted to set up their a plant in some uh, country like a, uh, which is not developed, underdeveloped countries in African continent. And uh, they uh, like advertise, like invited the interest from the people, like uh, people of various countries, like who will be interested to setting up a shoe factory in the African countries. So uh, the many people have uh, shown their interest. I'm just taking two names. Don't take it very uh, personally, but just to give you the fill. So Indians also have uh, um, like uh, shown interest and the condition was that the person will be given the full traveling allowance and the full uh, uh, staying allowance of one month in that country and uh, the expenses will be all 
uh, taken care by the company and uh, he or she has to only give that whether the shoe factory can be established in that country or not. So Indian has uh, taken the first uh, chance and they the person has uh, like reach to that place and stayed there and completely enjoyed the one month. One month was given and then come back and came back and came back with a very big report with very good photographs, nicely underlined colored text and everything. And at the end, he has written that no one wears the shoes in that country. So the shoe factory cannot be established. The next day, uh, the person from uh, Japan went and uh, he reached and uh, as he reached and he roam around and he could see that no one is wearing the shoe. He immediately called that person and said that I wanted to set up a shoe factory. Tell me what are your conditions and terms. I wanted to come back immediately, sign the contract and I wanted to start uh, immediately. The person said, but just now I have received the report from the first person and he is saying that he cannot. So can you elaborate he said no one is using the shoe here so i will i will teach them i will educate them that how important is wearing shoe uh, as a part of uh, in in health perspective and all and i am sure that they will understand this and they will start using the shoe so we will be only the person we will be the only one who will be making profits so i wanted to go and uh, set up a factory so what are your terms and conditions so see the difference between the two approaches. Hmm. So I see the difference between the two thinking thought processes. So this we have to create and when we have to create this into our students, we have to make every uh, learning, a teaching learning process, a project best uh, out of box thinking. So we have to uh, like ignite their minds and uh, uh, inspire them to think and uh, not just to work on the blooms uh, below the, the, the lower two levels of remembering and reproducing it. Right now what we do, we teach them and then we ask the same questions and they reproduce it as it is without any modification, without any um, innovation into it. And uh, the, because the question was that way. So this way you can develop this innovation and creativity in your students. Now the Ministry of Education, that government of India has established the, uh, the Ministry of Education's innovation cell to systematically foster the culture of innovation amongst all, all higher education institutions. The primary mandate of MIC is to encourage, inspire and nurture young students by supporting them to work with new ideas and transform them into prototypes while they are, inform, they are into informative years. So MIC has envisioned encouraging creation of institution innovation councils across selected the higher education institutions. A network of these IICs will be established to promote innovation in the institution through multitudinous modes leading to an innovation promotion ecosystem on the campuses. So you can be a part of this innovation council and you can get registered your institute by satisfying their criteria and then you will be into the network of these uh, institutes and then the students will be exposed to various activities which this innovation council is innovation cell is conducting. Uh, this is one of the way to uh, like uh, enhance or the foster the innovation innovative and creative mind into the student. This innovation one thing I would like to um, uh, like comment or uh, discuss with you is that innovation and creativity can be nurtured with the empathy also. It is related with the value. If you look at the innovations and the creative solutions has come out in the past, they are out of empathy only. So whenever the person is empathetic, then only he can think like he can think the pro he can think the problems into it and whenever he thinks the problems or the challenges into it, then only the he or she will be able to find out a solution. So basically the it is said, the research says that if you are empathetic or if you have a empathy as a strong value into it, then you it's a, a pos possibility of uh, being a creative and innovative is more. So you have to be 
so empathy is to be uh, like uh, you can say inculcate into the students whenever they are uh, on your campus or they are into the in, in your institute uh, like many many uh, such organi many organizations they uh, like uh, identify whether what is the va value system your employees and the value systems your students are having and they they help you out how to increase the empathy because the research tells us that if you work on empathy your creativity and innovation is going to increase automatically even if you uh, if you you can give a thought when you are at home and uh, as a family we always innovate something out of empathy only suppose if i am keeping something in between the way in society then somebody is getting uh, like some senior citizen is getting uh, is not comfortable with that object then what we do we immediately remove it and try to fit into another other way so that it will be helpful to the senior citizen also to helpful to us also so how it has come because empathy if we would not have a empathy then we will say okay i will keep this object like this in a way however you want to come or come or you want to struggle uh, the way you want to but, but this object will remain there itself so nothing will come out as an innovative solution so you can see that in our society also like we uh, we have seen many innovations happen because of empathy only so empathy is very important uh, uh, value and uh, you can say the attribute which is to be nurtured into the students and there are many exercises which you can um, run through through the curriculum so that the empathy can be uh, enhanced and uh, then Uh, now few people may debate also like how it can come because if it is not inside but what is inside can be always nurtured by some uh, programs by some talks by some uh, hands on by some doing some work uh, like all all these things can be incorporated into a curriculum now major focus of iic is to create a vibrant local innovation ecosystem startup supporting mechanism in higher education institutes prepare institute for atal ranking of institutions on innovation achievement framework i will be discussing this like what are the parameters of atal ranking then establish the function ecosystem for scouting ideas and pre incubation of ideas develop better cognitive ability for technology students so in a like pre incubation so startup these are the words now uh, like uh, become the part of any any institute so all institute is having few startups coming out then pre incubation uh, i feel that when you make a project based learning or assignment based learning then the pre incubation is going to happen in a big way and this pre incubation may then convert into the incubation and then uh, finally into startup and then into industry so this way we can strengthen our ecosystem so institute plays a very important role in strengthening the eco uh, economy of the country then functions of iic to conduct various innovation and entrepreneurship related activities uh, prescribed by central mic in a time bound fashion so generally they give the uh, their agenda and you have to write your action plan on those agenda and then uh, like you they you will be you will be evaluated on the basis of what you have committed and what you have done in a year mm. so uh, what happens with such a kind of a framework you automatically start doing the things so that's why you should be a part of such you know such initiatives identify and reward innovations and share success stories then organize periodic workshops seminars interactions with entrepreneurs investors professionals and create a mentor pool for student innovators network with peer and national entrepreneurship development organization so on these lines this iic works you go to the site you will find the mentors also so you can uh, you can interact with the mentors those those uh, those mentors will help you to establish this iic not only the uh, like uh, establishing but they will uh, also help you to Uh, make it functional and um, vibrant also so these are the functions of iic
Now create an institution's innovation portal to highlight innovative projects carried out by institutions, faculty and students. So generally a success story is to be shared. So sometimes um, when I visited one industry uh, long back and uh, I was uh, looking at some consultancy project. Actually, I have visited an industry to see some consultancy project. There was some challenge in PID controller. So we were discussing those things. And suddenly I saw the vice president of those that industry was uh, moving on the floor and then he was meeting everyone uh, and asking something. So I just asked why what he is doing now. Vice president coming on the floor and discussing with each one of them on the floor. So he said that this is our day where we show what is what innovative any any innovative thing we have done in a month. So he comes and he discusses like what any you know or innovative thing you have done. Then that employee has to showcase him. So see this can happen in, in the institute also like you can have a day wherein you can see that any innovative thing like in you know, even teaching learning process even in the studying technique from the student side or in any project in any course any assignment then you can discuss it out. So this this kind of a success stories this kind of a sharing breeds more success so success breeds more success. So that's why it should be done. Then organize hackathons idea competition mini challenges etc with the involvement of industries. But here we have to be very uh, like consciously we have to do this. Because in hackathons and all, we put a lot of problem statement. The students try to achieve it uh, as they do it in exam examinations, like just to attempt it. But it should be taken to, till the last, till the product, till the launching, till the marketing. So it should go to that level. And so we have to be very uh, cautious in implementing anything because it should not become a formality like, OK, we have conducted so many things, but what is the outcome? So everything should be outcome based. So whenever you start any activity, the outcomes are also um, uh, to be mentioned and how you are going to measure the outcome. Because sometimes what happens, we mention the outcomes like this uh, 100 problems to be solved and all. But what is the parameter you are going to measure this outcome? So everything should be uh, written down very systematically, planned systematically. I will say the strategically planned so that you will get really what we are looking for. Otherwise it, it will remain as a formality and then it may add one more paper into our report as I have explained you the story of the shoe making and but nothing will come out at the end. So we have to be very conscious at this stage. So I've given the website um, URL. You can go to this and get more information on this. Now the next uh, next good thing a government has started is a startup India. So it is launched on 16 January 2016. The startup India initiative has rolled out several programs with the objective of supporting entrepreneurs, building a robust startup ecosystems and transforming India into a country of job creators instead of job seekers. Here I feel we are really blessed that we are in India because we have so much of a diversity, so much of diversity into the culture, so much of diversity into the geographical, economical, then lot of diversity we have. So we are the people who can be more innovative and generate more jobs and generate more wealth. I mean, and so we are really blessed uh, uh, like we are in a country like India, but we have to take the benefit of it. And these programs are managed by a dedicated Startup India team, which reports to the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion. Now you may be knowing all of you that the AICT has also uh, uh, given a weightage to the startup for faculty. Now the faculty can also have a startup on the campus. So wherever you are in, in whichever institute, you can request your uh, higher authority to have some policy for the startup for faculty. So all big organizations are having uh, the tier one institutes are trying to set up this um, startup uh, facility for the faculty and there are many um, you know, funding agencies. They are now asking whether you have a startup, then only they fund you. So I will be coming to those uh, funding uh, agencies also. 
then simplification and hand holding so easier compliance easier exit process for failed startup then legal support fast tracking of patent application and a website to reduce the information asymmetry so the startup india is giving lot of support to you so uh, even there is a failure the, the, the startups of uh, if you look at the success rate it is very less and not so encouraging but slowly it will uh, improve and uh, to improve the assistance is given by the startup india council then funding and incentives that exemption on income tax and capital gain tax for eligible startups a fund of funds to infuse more capital into the startup ecosystem and credit guarantee scheme so i think all institute must think upon establishing this startup so they can have they can register a company uh, Uh, by taking some legal and uh, legal help and they then they can allow the student to work on a startup so they can they can create the infrastructure which will allow the uh, students to um, go for a startup so they will become more interested like there will be at least 10% students of uh, coming out of your institute can be entrepreneur then incubation and industry academia partnership so any startup will require this there, there will be incubation there will be a industry academia partnership unless and until there is a strong industry academia partnership you cannot think about incubation and you cannot think about the innovation you cannot think about the creativity and the even the startups so or the product generation or the ipr generation or we can say in a again if we go ahead the strengthening the economy of the nation so we have to have a strong industry academia partnership and in this case the industry also should understand this but generally what happens the academicians they have a uh, like a lot of uh, systems which involve the industry automatically like we have a board of studies and the board of study structure or the framework gives us that we should invite the industry person but what happens to the industry there there should also be some Uh, some uh, framework wherein they are inviting academia believing academia and trusting academia so it's a hand holding basically because we are working into the uh, uh, knowledge generation and they are working into the knowledge implementation so this gap has to be understand very correctly what is happening right now is that the industry feels that they are the only people like we are the academia only should reach to them because we are in need of sending our students somewhere but they are also in need of getting a good students so good student this definition is really uh, uh, will take some time to uh, define so i will not go into it but uh, but in industry academia partnership we have to understand each other's role and there should be a hand holding and uh, a good uh, symbiotic relation should be established then only something is something can happen about the incubation startup and uh, the ipr generation and innovation then the ministry of defense i will come so that was the about the innovation cell established by the government of india so many department they also work on the innovation so ministry of defense um, like uh, they they give the tdf that is a technology development fund and uh, it is by it is through drdo basically and uh, it is uh, to promote the self reliance in defense technology as a part of make in india mm. so you may be knowing that the condition of a make in india that uh, so much of percentage of the parts of any product should be to completely indigenous like the indian make and to do that uh the tdf is given tdf the tdf is uh, giving a lot of funds but the requirement for the tdf is that the the one who is applying the faculty who is applying should have a startup in his name or some industry should come which will be partnering with you and then um and then the funds will be given to that uh, uh, to for that project that is called as a technology development fund and this is particularly for the defense uh, projects so you can go to that website and you can see the challenges which uh, uh, they wanted to solve and you can be a part of it by collaborating with industry actually the um, the 
uh, relation that the, the percentage is 49 and 51 percent, but the company company should be Indian company. Uh, the uh, the 51 percent stake stake uh, should be there by the Indian person. Like suppose a company is a multinational company the, or industry which is trying to collaborate with you, then you have to see whether the 51 percent stakes are with the Indian um, officials. So if that is there, then that multinational also can be a part of uh, it. So the eligibility criteria tells us the two important thing is that you should have an industry collaboration and then uh, you uh, the even the faculty. Uh, the other option is that the faculty can have its own startup. So the faculty if having a own startup, then they are uh, eligible because they won't need any industry as such. But if if there is an academia going on, then industry collaboration is required strictly. So in this case, you can understand that how closely we have to work with the industry. We can only invite them to partner uh, interaction is a different thing. Collaboration is a different thing and the partnering is another stage. So partnering I assume to be the higher highest level of uh, uh, highest level in this uh, in this uh, you can say ladder. So the part whenever you want to have a partnership, then you should have so much of interaction. So uh, that's that kind of a relation we need with the industry. Now the scheme encourages participation of public private industries, especially MSME, so as to create an ecosystem for enhancing the cutting edge technology capability for defense application by inculcating R&D culture and industry. So it is both way that industry should also develop some R&D culture as I have uh, as I was discussing few minutes back that it's not only that institute should have the institute only should reach to the industry, but the industry also should give a thought that they also should have a R&D culture and when the R&D culture will come when they have a good uh, association with the academic institute. You can go to the DRDO site and uh, or you can go to the TDF site directly the technology development fund and you can see some success stories also. So from those success stories you you can think that how the things to be uh, uh, to be initiated at your institute to uh, to apply for such funds and uh, how you how you can uh, develop your student to become innovative. Then there's another uh, scheme of in, in innovation is the Stand Up India for financing SCSTR or the Women Entrepreneurs. And this is by the CDB. You all of you know that the Small Industries Development Bank of India and uh, this gives grants of 10 lakhs to 1 crore. It is called as a bank loan. OK, so it is from 10 lakh to 1 crore. Right? It's a woman entrepreneur also. You can apply a uh, woman, lot of scope for woman entrepreneur. But it should be in a manufacturing services or trading sector. OK, and uh, there should be a 51 percent of shareholding and the controlling stake should be held by either an SCST candidate or woman entrepreneur. So in every funding, uh, every funding agency will give the control to the academicians only. So we can take those uh, even in TDF, the funds will be deposited to the academic institute. If academic institute is partnering with the industry and then the, the funds will be will be disbursed to the academic institute to the industry. Those uh, those who are involved into making some innovation in the defense uh, products. OK, so uh, this is about the Startup India for financing the SCST or women entrepreneurs through CDB. The eligibility is that it should be above 18 years of age. Then the loans under scheme is available for only Greenfield projects. The Greenfield signifies in the context the first time venture of beneficiary in the manufacturing or services or trading sector. In case of non individual enterprises, 51% of the shareholding I have just mentioned. Then uh, you have to uh, like uh, please focus on some words like a manufacturing services or trading sector. Uh, in IIT Bombay in sign is there. You might be aware about it. So which encourages the incubation and uh, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship and startup. So they won't allow any e-commerce kind of a thing. 
so they more focus on the manufacturing uh, services or the product development so there is another um, uh, called as a uh, another funding on the innovation it is given called as extramural research or core research grant this is given by science and engineering research board called as acrb it comes under the ministry of science and technology okay so these funds are available and you can go to the acrb site and you can see how frequently they are organized they, they give the schedule throughout the year they give the schedule what funds what grants are available and uh, how to apply uh, so you can take funds for core research and extramural research there's another uh, organization uh, i'm just putting very big uh, uh, big uh, like innovative uh, agencies like the big the funding giving uh, in a big way so there's a big only that is a biotechnology ignition grant so this uh, funding scheme is under the um, basically a biotechnology board and the applicant must be either an incubity or have a registered company with a functional r and d laboratory to be eligible for this grant now looking at all these slides you might have realized that there should be some policy at your institute for faculty startup otherwise such a good grants you will not be able to apply or you have to rely on some industry and then that is, that is more difficult rather than having your own idea and having registered your own startup so the scheme is designed to simulate stimulate commercial and commercialization of research discoveries by providing very early stage grants to help the bre help bridge the gap between discovery and inventions okay so this big is about the biotechnology and looking at the pandemic you can understand that how important this field is so uh, as now uh, you might have aware also like the biology is now a part of engineering curriculum so many students are working on a biotechnology project so this the faculty can go for such kind of a uh, schemes they can go for such kind of a schemes then there is a dairy entrepreneurship development scheme this is under the department of animal husbandry and uh, the this animal husbandry they give uh, like they they give funding to cover the few topics like uh, in the dairy sector like uh, enhancement of milk production procurement preservation transportation processing and marketing of milk by providing back ended capital subsidy or bankable projects so once i got an opportunity to visit this department on some r and d project and i understood that there is a lot of scope for doing lot of innovations like uh, in, by increasing the so to increase the milk uh, production and uh, even to take care of the health of the animals okay uh, and uh, so you need a lot of technological intervention so uh, under this department also lot of funding is available and those who are really innovative and creative they can work on this schemes and they can come out with uh, good products also Uh, like artificial insemination and all these are the areas where uh, the they are working a lot so lot of research has been done but that research has to be converted so they need a need technological intervention and those technological interventions we can provide even they need lot of uh, uh, like uh, Uh, like a management kind of a thing also like marketing of a milk then the creating a transportation chain cycle uh, so all these things they can uh, all these things uh, need lot of intervention and uh, uh, if you want to if you want to make a more profit or if you want to make it uh, more environment friendly and all then 
you uh, there are there are many challenges which can be solved by the technology and the management and the science people so coming together and the nabard the all the schemes are implemented through nabard so you can really go to, you please go to this website and you can uh, think about some projects and you can uh, offer those projects to your students also then as a big big scheme that biotechnology ignition scheme there is another called as a birac that is a biotechnology industry research assistance council and uh, this is uh, giving the scheme called as a small business innovation research initiative so here some innovation in research is uh, encouraged and the scheme is launched in 2005 to boost the public private partnership efforts in the country so sbiri was the first of the kind early stage innovation focus a ppp initiative in the area of biotechnology it has facilitated innovation risk taking by small and medium companies and bringing together the private industry public institutions and government under one roof to promote the research and innovation in the indian biotech sector so you can visit to the birac and um, you will see they also frequently advertise their schemes uh, but only thing is that they need the industry participation because they more focus on the product development so at the end there should be some product which is coming into the market or some solution which is going to the farmer or which is going to the um, going for a horticulture or etc so uh, this birac is also a very good uh, council wherein you can uh, you can work for um, the projects so uh, you have to be only innovative so if you look at all the schemes the 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 heart of it what is required you have to be innovative you have to be creative you have to think some differently which will be useful to the community then the objectives of the scheme is to provide support for early stage free proof of concept research in biotechnology by industry to support new indigenous technologies particularly those related to societal needs in the healthcare food and nutrition agriculture and other sectors now you can understand how important is this because in today in pandemic the healthcare the food nutrition uh, agriculture everything has become uh, very important and everything has to be looked in a different way looking at the constraints of the pandemic and the constraints of other uh, parts like the economy has also slowed down so in this case what innovation we can suggest or what kind of a technology or management we can suggest so this such kind of a schemes will be useful in implementing our dream projects it to nurture and mentor the in innovative and emerging technologies entrepreneurs to assist new enterprises to forge appropriate linkages with academia and government so now with all these schemes once again i am repeating what is more important is that you have to have a innovative mind then you should have a strong collaboration with the government agencies as well as with the industry with the public also hmm. I mean, public in the sense, the society in large. So promoting innovations in individuals, startups, and MSME that is called as a prism. So that is also given by the government of India, and the schemes aims to support individual innovators, which will enable to achieve the agenda of inclusive development. Uh, so there are the first areas defined into it, and uh, you can be a part of a prism. So individual can also. apply for uh, if they have uh, any innovative idea then the thrust areas include uh, in this like the proposals are invited from individuals also and the thrust areas are the green technology clean energy because that is the need of today you know that everything we are facing today is because of a climate change the rainy season is not now a rainy season the rainy season is throughout the year then the uh, few parts are not receiving the rain in a proper a proper amount or few are just you know, facing the storms the wind velocity has increased so all these has become because of a climate change so our technology has to be green and clean 
so industrially ut utilizable smart materials like we have to be also focus on a eco friendly material and uh, smart materials then waste to wealth a lot of uh, like waste management has become a uh, issue like anything like if you look at the um, uh, government if you even if, even if you go to the corporation and just ask about the waste management they are uh, they are in lot of they have lot of challenges so they could not even uh, like uh, uh, biodegradable waste is also not able to uh, degrade and then reduce the volume of the waste so such a waste we are generating so we have to work on a waste reduction then the waste recycling repurpose reusing so in a, in a way that we have to convert into the wealth so lot of technological intervention lot of thought process and lot of creativity and innovation is required so this waste management has become a very very challenging because that is that is destroying somebody might say okay kachra pada raha to kya farak padne wala hai but that is destroying our soil quality that is creating lot of pollution that is creating lot of bacteria viruses and we all are suffering because of that in a way the cancer has increased because the lot of particles lot of viruses has been bred because of the waste which is not managed per properly so we have to think about waste to wealth affordable health care now you might have seen that the in covid situation the uh, the the cities which are well equipped the the condition was better but the rural area where the health care centers are not working properly the people have suffered a lot in the second wave of covid and uh, everyone has uh, witnessed it so i don't have to repeat so affordable health care has become a really challenge for us no many people are working iit madras i would like to give an example on innovation so you must visit to the iit madras research park uh, if you could not visit personally you can visit their website and you can see the way they are doing the innovations in healthcare so one of the one of the ambulance they have created which is the operation theater on wheels and that's operation theater is for the eye operation and wherein the cataract is removed so the survey has been done and it is seen that in rural area the old people the senior citizens they won't go for their cataract removal because they have to visit to the taluka place and it becomes difficult for them to visit to taluka place because somebody has to accompany and then in villages um like leaving behind their agricultural jobs and then taking somebody to the taluka place becomes not so easy and comfortable so what happens in that case that senior citizen loses or um, they uh, like uh, loses their vis uh, vision and then that creates a social issue also because when somebody is losing the vision then it becomes a liability on the family and then the all social problems come into the picture so looking at this problem they have created the uh, operation theater on wheels so the two two big vans they get connected and it becomes operation theater and they it goes to the villages and there they do the cataract surgery now people might be thinking wow, what is very uh, what is uh, so great into it so when you go into the details you will understand that the operation theater has to be sterilized there should not be dust particle the vibration is not to be there because once you it is moving so the it should not move then the power supply requirement how it will get the power supply if the village doesn't have then it should have a battery backup the generator everything the water requirement so everything has taken care and made and now the it is done with the shankara netrale so again once again you can see that and such kind of a now uh, the operation theaters they are exporting also and many state governments have even uh, procured it so if you look at the innovation it has come out of a empathy so what i was trying to um, uh, focus or emphasize is that empathy is a very important value which is to be uh, nurtured or inculcated into the students so that they can become innovative if somebody would not have uh, like uh, given uh, uh, given any 
attention to such kind of uh, issues coming out uh, because of a cataract in villages, then they would not have come out with such um, ambulance system or the OT operation theater. So such kind of a lot of healthcare, affordable healthcare products they have made, and you can see on their website. Ma'am, your voice is not coming. You are not audible, ma'am. Archana, ma'am. Uh, uh, participants, please wait. That ma'am is facing some connectivity issue. So just uh, log in. Yes, ma'am, your screen is visible. Okay. So, a lot many things can be done in a water and sewage management. Like a sewage management, now we are using a lot of chemicals for washing our house, washing our washrooms and all, and all these are going through the sewage and it is getting, and the rivers are getting contaminated. So there are a lot of things to do. So these, uh, in this, the government is encouraging the individual also to apply for the funds. That is called as a PRISA. Then another scheme has been launched that is called as a 4E, that is end-to-end -end energy efficiency. This is also offered by the uh, CDB, and uh, this is about um, about the World Environment Day. It is uh, it is started on the World Environment Day. Because energy efficiency is important. Right now, we are only uh, focusing on electrical energy also, only. Whenever there's an energy term comes, the people think only the electrical energy. So it's not about the electrical energy. We have to uh, minimize the uses of electrical energy, which is coming out of a thermal power station, because that is really making a lot of uh, issues and creating a challenges. But energy in term, we have to think about all energies like uh, uh, hydro energy, then the pneumatic and everything. So uh, this is regarding the uh, end to end energy efficiency. Then there's another scheme uh, is used for scheme for promotion of innovation, rural industry and entrepreneurship that is called as a Aspire. So Aspire was launched to set up a network of technology centers and to set up incubation centers to accelerate entrepreneurship and also to promote startups for innovation in agro industry particularly. So this you can be a part of this Aspire also. Uh, this is also a very good. Um, you can consider uh, the scheme given by the uh, government, but everywhere you have to be as I'm mentioning more and like many times it is innovation. You have to be innovative. 
then implement the incubation and commercialization of a business ideas program through technical research institutes including those in the field of agro based industry i what i will suggest all of you that uh, the student should be able to write the business plan okay so there are many templates available on internet so this templates tells uh, helps the students to write the business plan wherein they can write the unique selling price they can write the challenges they can think about the markets so they can make a business plan a small business plan uh, what uh, in about the about the uh, about any idea so how you can incorporate in your curriculum whenever there is a project part of it or some project component of uh, the curriculum you can add compulsorily preparing a business plan they may not be producing a product they may not be doing a uh, coming out of a product of it out of it but what will happen they will start thinking about it so you can make a mandatory that okay now make a business plan out of this first make a business plan so there are many templates they can refer any template then there is another scheme uh, offered by the government is a new gen innovation and entrepreneurship development center this is to the department of science and technology and is uh, it is called as a idc new gen idc so there is a idc also you know that innovation and entrepreneurship development center but this is new gen and that is being promoted in educational institution to develop institutional mechanism to create entrepreneurial culture in uh, science and technology academic institutions and to foster techno entrepreneurship for generation of a wealth and employment of science and technology persons the new gen idcs are established in academic institutions science colleges engineering colleges universities management institutes having requisite expertise and infrastructure so objectives of the scheme are to channelize the knowledge and the energy of a youth towards becoming active partners in the economic development process to catalyze and promote the development of knowledge based and innovation driven enterprises and promote employment opportunities amongst youth especially students then to inculcate a culture of innovation driven entrepreneurship uh, so now till now you might have understood that the research then innovation then entrepreneurship and the startup these all are coming uh, one after the other so they all are gear together so you have to um, like uh, make a curriculum or the teaching learning process in a such a way that all these components are taken care to act as an institutional mechanism for uh, providing various services including information on all aspects of enterprise building to budding uh, science and technology entrepreneurs the institution should be university who are eligible now for this scheme so the institution should be university or deemed university or an institute college offering engineering technology science courses at degree level or above for at least 5 years in case of a college or institute it should be duly recognized and affiliated and while in case of the private institution it should be promoted by a trust or a society registered under relevant acts besides being recognized and affiliated to aict universities So this is the eligible condition for for this um, uh, next gen new gen idc then there is a called as a nsic infrastructure scheme this is particularly for ict that is the information and communication technology uh, it is called as the nsic infrastructure scheme it incubator this comes under the ministry of msme and uh, national small industries corporation so here the scheme aims at creating sustainable entrepreneurship development in the areas of information and communication technology especially for generation entrepreneurs by fostering nurturing the innovative ideas to commercially viable business propositions now you all we all have uh, understood the uh, the you can say the importance of ict in this pandemic because we could now also we are here because of ict only Uh, we could communicate and we can understand each other because of ict itself so entrepreneurs harness the expertise of nsic in extending the hand holding of startup companies to become successful small enterprises the scheme also caters to networking between r and d and industry beneficiaries to create successful commercial ventures 
so anybody can be a part of this scheme so institutes in general we have seen lot of schemes which are based on the innovations and uh, uh, innovations creativity uh, and what institute can have so any institute can go for edc that is the entrepreneurship development cell they can go for iedc then they can go for a new generation new gen iedc then they can have innovation cell uh, then they can have startup cell then nidhi center because nidhi prayas also gives the sponsorship to many projects but the project should be a product based uh, product uh, oriented so nidhi prayas uh, sponsors those innovations then the tinkering laboratories so institute can have all this on the campuses and many institutes have those who are really performing well having good ranking system then they then they have all this uh, initiatives on their campuses then there is a utter ranking innovation uh, framework so um, for those utter ranking innovation uh, the the parameters which are the on which parameter it is evaluated so it is evaluated on mindset development the teaching learning process infrastructure and facilities innovation developed startups established collaboration and investment ip and commercialization so if you look at all these things the the overall if if you look at those uh, parameters and if you want it to really go for area then you have to uh, focus more on your academic processes okay so all these are a part of academic processes like mindset development i said i just now told you that you have to train the brains of the students in such a way that they will be thinking out of box so making the project based learning assignment based learning and teaching learning the infrastructure facilities to support all those things like if you want to really make your students innovative they should think then the the infrastructure and the ecosystem should be available to uh, should be available for them to uh, exercise those things or to demonstrate the things which you are uh, trying to inculcate into them then innovations developed startups established collaborations and investments ip and commercialization so all these parameters are uh, uh, on these parameters the uh, utter ranking framework works and uh, uh, if you have if i go to the my previous slide you can see if you have all these cells on your campus then you can automatically uh, will be answering to these parameters so how this uh, how this sales uh, how this sales will help you to achieve this parameters then if you look in a uh, uh, like if you go into the details you will understand that your curriculum should be strong enough so when i say strong enough means what the curriculum includes the curriculum includes the contents that is the syllabus what we call it as it includes the evaluation system and it also includes the delivery how you are going to deliver so as i mentioned in the beginning of my session that the bloom's taxonomy to be taken care of. when you are delivering the knowledge the bloom's level should be uh, at least uh, after the third level like it should be analysis above the analysis then the curriculum is very important part because curriculum only can be used to train the brains in a innovative way uh, and then you can uh, automatically get all the things which you were planning then the industry linkages so you should have a strong industry linkages i just mentioned in my session that it should not be only interaction but after interaction it should have a collaboration and then it should reach to the partnership so we have to increase our industry linkages in such a way that it should go for a partnership and then community connect because innovation cannot be done without a community so you can be a part of unnat bharat unnat maharashtra kind of activities if you do not want to be a part of it suppose or you are not eligible then you can do on your own like you can reach to the society try to solve their problems like sewage sewage disposal in theory we know everything how to do it but when you go into the practice then you will find out that this exactly you cannot implement 
what it is given in theory, but you can take a reference of that and you have to modify it for that particular uh, city or that particular area or for that particular part. So a community connect that is called as a outreach is very, very important. So any institute which wanted to do much on the innovation and uh, want to increase the IPRs and technology transfer and increase the internal revenue generation, then you should focus on this, the curriculum, industry linkages and community connect. So outreach has to be increased. The minute, many times what happens, the institute, they won't focus on outreach. So the outreach is considered as a nuisance sometimes in an institute, but I, I request them that the outreach to be taken in a different way. The outreach you can use use as to generate more innovative minds, uh, more problem based learning you can uh, you can have on the campuses with the outreach with a strong outreach. So in a short, it is like that the community development research and economy. These all are uh, will be going together. So we have to focus on a research which will be useful for a community. Automatically the economy will be driven. So academics, entrepreneurs and industry. So we have to be uh, with, we have to have a strong bonding or we have to have an understanding of entrepreneurship and industry, both. With this, I would like to conclude, but before that, uh, I just I will be st stopping my presentation here uh, and thank you very much. But before conclude my session, I would like to give you a few uh, formulas which I said that how you can increase the innovative mind. Uh, so I will be uh, stopping the sharing and I will be sharing my slate. So. Uh, is my paint? Yes, is yes. Visible. It's visible. Yeah. Yeah. So I will be giving some techniques, tools, or tricks. You can say that how you can um, increase the creativity in your students is by using some techniques called as a cards. It is called as cards. Okay. So what is this? Like suppose any system you are uh, working upon, like you are working upon suppose the electric vehicle or you are working upon the waste management, then you can first write down the C part, that is the complaints. What are the complaints? What happened? One second. What are the complaints actually? Something has happened with my slide. OK, it is not getting written. Complaints, OK? So you can uh, write down about the complaints. So first you can First is the complaints. Then you can add A as add. So A will be adding uh, cards out of cards. A will be adding something. So uh, any system you will be uh, working on it. Uh, you will be doing uh, the first is a complaint that is C, then add, then rearrange. Mm, so this will be the rearrange. Extremely sorry because I really not understood huh? what has happened with this. So rearrange. OK, so R is for rearrange. Then the D is for divide. How you are going to divide? So D is for divide. 
Mm. So divide means like if uh, if whatever is a system, can you divide into the parts? And S is for subtract. S is for subtract. So you can ask the student when you are doing anything, working on any project. So you can ask the students to apply the cards to make them uh, to uh, like ignite the creative or innovative mind or to make them think innovative or creative. So you can ask that what are the what are the complaints on the present system? Can you write down the complaints about the present system? Uh, like when I explained you the problem of cataract, the complaints was that like the people are not able to go to the taluka places or the district places for their operations to remove the cataract. So complaints, what are the complaints? Then what you can add into the it, like more addition, can you add something into it? Then write down the rearrangement, like can you rearrange something? Can you divide, like can you divide into the parts, divide into the steps, divide the steps and all. Then subtract. So this is the one way we can uh, like uh, make the students to think upon, like because thinking is a process. So when you want to uh, ask, like when you say that think something, so think means what? We have to give them systematically also. We generally say that, oh, uh, can you think something? But what think? So they have to uh, even uh, given us systematic uh, inputs on thinking. Now the next is called as a substitutes. Uh, so we call it as a substitutes. So in substitutes, what happens? The students will be asked to substitute for a language. They will be uh, asked to substitute for a language. Then you can ask a substitute for object. So that will also by doing this, they, you can uh, nurture the creativity and um, innovation. Substitute for object. Then substitute for an organ. OK, then substitute for a material. Like I'm using some material. Can I change the material? OK, the substitute for material. Then substitute for energy. Substitute for energy. Suppose I'm using now electrical energy. If I wanted that my student should think creatively or innovatively, I can ask them like, OK, this is the electric vehicle which is using battery. Now replace the battery. How can I get energy? So they will come out with an idea that can be a creative or a innovative. Creative means like completely a new or innovative means like something they will add to the existing one. Then substitute for process. Then substitute for process. Suppose there is a process and you want the students to be uh, innovative, then you can ask that, okay, what can be a substitute for this process? If I'm doing a distillation, is there any, any substitute for this process? So they will think something out of box or they will start thinking at least. Then substitute for person. Uh, so in management that can be used. Substitute for person. Substitute for person. Sorry, at this late I do not know what has happened. And then substitute for any system organization. OK, so you can make creative um, or innovative uh, your students. You can make your students creative and innovative. How how you can you can use this techniques like you can use the when they are doing a project you can ask them like what are the complaints about existing system what you can add into how you can rearrange how you can divide uh, how you can subtract the thing so doing this only you will you will get a new version mm, so they they will automatically uh, be tuned uh, to think innovative then you can ask them to substitute like something substitute for energy, substitute for organ, substitute for object, depending on our project. Yeah? So depend, the, depending on your thrust area and substitute for a material, then substitute for a process, substitute for the person or the institution. So therein they will they will start thinking about some alternative and in that way they can become the creative and innovative. So automatically they will start uh, thinking creatively and innovatively. So I am thank thankful to all of you uh, for patient listening and uh, would like to uh, take questions if you uh, wanted to. Uh, yes, thank you ma'am for a wonderful session. Now uh, the session is for question answer. If any participants have any question, they can ask, they can unmute and ask the question.
any participant has any doubt or any question to ma'am you uh, yes the person can ask sir uh, i have one question yes madam uh, is there any facil facility or government support for the consultancy sale any scheme for consultancy if institute want to start a consultancy sale so is there any support from the government like infrastructure support or what support government is providing uh for a consultancy sale you can always form a consultancy sale at your institute level uh government doesn't have any scheme for starting a consultancy but indirectly indirectly when you try to offer some services to the industry like i have discussed so many scheme, uh, so many schemes with you right so if you look at those schemes then uh, i i don't think there is a special need of um, any any support from government because when i am trying to develop some innovation or some product then automatically i can provide it to the uh, industry so consultancy sale if you want to establish you have to uh, take a help of some uh, legal also like what happens if it is not met in time or uh, because there is a time limit then there are some restrictions on the quality of the report and uh, uh, so all these things you have to take care so there is a consultancy sale uh, networking uh, at iit roorkee you can be a member of it but uh, as such i have not seen any uh, funding for the consultancy in the name of a consultancy obviously the research which will definitely convert into the consultancy the uh, even the innovation will convert into the consultancy is it okay sir yes uh, hande sir have you cleared your doubt okay so yes next bharti jadav ma'am dr bharti jadav yes you can ask uh, yes thank you sir uh, thank you ma'am really it was a very very uh, wonderful session we really got a lot of in insights about uh, the various schemes uh, i would also like to mention that uh, we at uh, bharti vidyapeeth imd we are also a part of institutes innovation cell iic and we are conducting the activities uh, which are being you know uh, given to these iics uh, we have recently started it actually we would like to do more in this and also we would like to uh, give our students the pre incubation and incubation facilities uh, okay. so yeah so actually i would like to know more about it like what uh, you in your institute college of engineering pune are doing uh, regarding uh, these facilities and how we can give these facilities to our students okay so uh, pre incubation you can start at your institute uh, because any project which you are uh, like part of a you are running or undertaking as a part of a curriculum uh, can be converted into a pre incubation and for incubation you can use our bau institute because uh, cup is having a bau institute and the bau institute is established by uh, with the support of a department of science and technology and in bau institute they uh, the incub uh, the, there are many incubators and then then they convert into the startup and uh, get matured and then they go out so the for incubation you can have you can use the bau institute there are many incubators i am just saying as you said i, I am from cup so you can be a part of cup's bau you can be a part of iit bombay sign for incubation and startup you can be a part of a iit madras uh, incubation or may all iits they have their own incubation centers even you can have your own incubation center under D, uh, you can use the dst grants and uh, uh, even if you do not have a grants you can start your incubation center uh, by registering a uh, section at company so uh, that is about and the pre incubation is that any project which you are extending and uh, writing a business plan and Uh, making the student to think upon the product line on the product line like how the it can be a product or how it can be a uh, something which can be served to society because in management it can be a package or something like that so uh, that can be a pre incubation activity
ओके ओके थैंक यू सो मच रियली एक्चुअली आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू हैव योर सपोर्ट Uh, for this incubation and even for pre incubation uh, facilities for our students so maybe we can have uh, further discussions even after it and if you could support us uh, that would yeah, be really yeah sure yeah. sure we will yeah i will be happy because we can uh, we can use the infrastructure available uh, very effectively means right now i wanted to suggest all the industry all the institute is that you use your infrastructure for incubation pre incubation startup and research park because now the students are not coming on the campus and even after the, i do not know how many students will be allowed at a time and how long it will go so till then we can really focus we can focus on the research parks the incubations and the pre incubation activity a lot because uh, that will add the knowledge as well as the wealth also into the system Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. Looking forward. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Yes, anybody has any doubt, any question? Participants. Okay. Uh, now, thank you, madam, for wonderful session. that rightly in the first session you have explained that innovation there is definitions of innovation and you have given uh, explained very good example of traffic control how that uh, the concept of the innovation is implemented in traffic control system uh, along with that you have uh, given the various uh, in detail that is startup india how this startup india is a project of government of india and uh, what are the various fundings that uh, uh, various you can say the uh, biotechnology ignition grant then dairy entrepreneurship development schemes uh, then uh, bi birac so these are the various uh, you can say the uh, various schemes and along with that you have explained the various thrust areas for the innovation there is a green technology clean energy then industrial utilizable smart materials eco friendly materials waste management that is affordable health care water sewage management so these are the various thrust areas for the innovation uh, along with that you have explained various uh, that is core end to end energy efficiency scheme then aspire uh, then new generation uh, idc so these are the various schemes and who are the eligible for that schemes to get the funding uh, then also you have explained uh, very well about the uh, institute can have various cells like edc edc then id idc new generation iedc uh, innovation cell startup cell uh, nidhi center thinking laboratories and uh, that uh, at the end of your session you have explained very well that whatever the curriculum that your curriculum should be strong enough so it helps to the student means you can use the bloom's taxonomy and it helps to the for the uh, thinking uh, improve the thinking capacity of the students then you should have industry linkage strong industry linkage so you may it should not be only uh, interaction it should be interaction collaboration at the end it should be in, uh, converting to the partnership and also uh, you want means you should have the uh, uh, outreach there is a increase outreach so that it helps to you to uh, getting the funds and uh, at the end of session we have explained very well that cards that uh, this technique to uh, improve the creativity of the students is in short the card technique is uh, uh, complaints about the present system then what are the new additions in the system then rearrange divide before divide and yes for subtract and apart from that we have given the that a new one more the technique that is a substitutes you can find the substitute for the language substitute for object substitute for organ substitute for material then substitute for process and substitute for person Uh, substitute for organization system so in this way you have uh, uh, explained very well that the uh, concept of innovation and various schemes and how we could get the uh, funding for that so innovation so on behalf of this uh, apdp team i am thankful to you ma'am to for a such a wonderful session thank you very much yeah thank you i am thankful to the organizing team and i am thankful to the college uh, 
authority for inviting me uh, and giving an opportunity to present myself in front of all the participants under uh, Atal FDP. And also thankful to my institute uh, for uh, giving me permission to present in front of you. So uh, each one, thank you each one of you and uh, good day and uh, have a safe uh, have a safe day and uh, take care. Bye. Uh, OK, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, participants, we'll start the next session at 11.40. We'll take a break of 15 minutes and we'll start next session at 11.40. Thank you. Uh, Subramaniam Nadar, sir, I can see you have joined the session. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. So we'll be starting uh, by 11 uh, uh, 40, as sir said. So maybe by 11 30, 35, we can just check the camera and everything. Is it okay, sir? Uh, I think, sir, uh, now can we check the. Okay, uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can. You can, sir. Please. Uh, I can just. Uh, yeah. Uh, Deepak, sir, can you take over? You are there. Deepak Nevalgun, sir. Sir, actually, I am today. I am in Chennai. Right, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm traveling. Um, okay, okay, sir. Sir, now I am trying to share this my screen. Yes, sir. you you are audible, sir. We can see you also. You can just check your presentation now. Oh yes. Deepak, yes. Deepak sir, are you there? Deepak Navalgun, sir. Sir, I I click the share share screen and the arrow mark. Then again, two options here: screen and window. Where I want to. Uh, you screen. screen you you click on screen. Okay. The desktop option is yeah yeah. Uh, screen, yes. We can see your visible, I'm sir. Yes, yes. innovation at Adani. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, yeah, sir. we can see. You can see. You can yeah. just take a full screen mode, sir. Now, uh, one minute, sir. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Right. Perfect, sir. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, I think I have some videos with me. Uh, can we check something? There it is, Rana. This one is some small animation I have. Mm. Uh, Nadar, sir, good morning. Good morning, good morning, sir. Sir, is it morning, busy? You, sir? Thank you for joining. Uh, we have Sorry. almost uh, uh, 15 minutes. Right? Sir, do you see? Uh, could you see my video? Yes, yes, it is visible, sir. It is visible. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sir, uh, uh, if you can throw more light on uh, your face because it's slightly darker there in. Yeah. Thoda andera lag raha hai sir wahan pe. Ah, mera thoda mera sound hai na light nahi dikhta. Acha nahi hai kya sir wahan pe? Okay okay. Mera hotel mein hoon. Ah ha. Acha acha okay. Okay, I will try something. Yes yes. Uh, participants, the attendance link is shared in the chat window. All of you are requested to share your uh, for the previous session. 
to mark your attendance and the uh, feedback also. Sir, I think I am now okay. Now, now yes, slightly better, sir, than uh, the, in the earlier one. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, it is better, sir, now. Okay. क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 